All right, let's talk about it. Week five, RLCS schedule is out. Uh, so every season, we change the week five schedule. Just the order of the games. Obviously, everyone still plays everyone. Uh, just for playoff purposes, playoff scenarios, slash hype, slash, you know, you just don't want teams to, like, clinch or get eliminated normally when you could help it when they're not playing. Uh, so th uh, these are the schedules for NA in Europe. So I help with these, and we'll go over why they are the way they are. Um so let's start with a couple rules that are in place. Um, uh, really, the only rule is teams cannot play back-to-back -back games. That's basically it. They can't play back-to-back -back series because uh, we feel like that's a little bit of an unfair advantage for that team. Um, so that's like the only real rule in place. Besides that, anything can really happen. Uh, so when I look through the schedule and try and figure out where teams can go, I should actually probably bring up my playoff scenario page here real quick. Um... You basically look at teams that can, no matter what happens outside of it, they can control their own destiny with either being eliminated or by clinching a spot. Um, so I'll bring up my NA here. Sorry, I just got to bring up my playoff scenarios. So the reason why Ghost Gaming versus Birds is last, it's not really because of Ghost Gaming here. Uh, Ghost Gaming, they've clinched the top six spot. Um, they could clinch a top two and that's the thing. It depends on space station, Pittsburgh Knights, but they might be eliminated from top two contention at that point. But, uh, there's a very real chance that the birds will not have clinched yet. Um, and no matter what happens, the birds, if they sweep ghosts, they would be in. So that's why we have that game last. Now, obviously sometimes you just have to hope and, like hope and pray that things don't go terribly and like birds clinch anyway and the game doesn't matter that much which is definitely a possibility like in this case like if g2 were to get like swept in both their games um then like birds very likely in depends on um say cloud nine won that series as well birds are in then and it doesn't really matter ghost though would at least be playing for a top four spot so that's the other uh thing th that we get is that ghost is at least at that point, probably playing for top four spot. We'll say Knights, we'll say Space Station wins this one up. Then Ghost is playing for a number three spot, or if they lose, a five or six. Birds, they're not really moving, so at least there's something to play for. Um, you hope, obviously, that the last game is super hype, and it's like, all right, Birds, you have to win to get into the playoffs, and that's what we're banking on. Uh, but it can't always be that easy. Uh, this season, the playoff scenarios are a little bit weird. Uh, so that's the reason why that game is last. Space Station Knights is right before that because that game puts pressure on both those teams to try and win as best they possibly can to try and guarantee a top two spot. Say Ghost were to lose this series, say like 3-0 and Space Station won earlier 3-0, then at this point it would just be whoever wins is top two. But if Ghost wins, then this series could get a little bit less hype. Because there are some cases where, say, Space Station won like that. Uh, well, there's, hold on. I'm trying to find a good one. Uh, say they lost this one. Uh, there's some uh, spots where uh, Pittsburgh Knights or Space Station would have to win by a certain amount. And if they win by less than that amount, well, then they're not top two. And that would be kind of deflating. You kind of want to keep the pressure on those two teams to win as, uh, as badly as possible. Uh, so that's why that game is there in fifth, and that's probably our match of the week, just to see uh, who is top two. Very likely a top two spot. Cloud9 G2. Uh, we'll start at the beginning, actually, here real quick. Cloud9 Rogue is first. Uh, you could have put, I guess, Cloud9 G2 here, but basically you have to separate Cloud9 and G2 from the other Cloud9 and G2 games, which is why Energy Rogue is not the first game of the day. Like, Energy Rogue, not that important. Uh, the other thing that we can also look at is match importance here, which I'll show you real quick. The, uh, uh, the other reason why Ghost and Birds is last is their match importance is 2.8. Matters so much for so many teams that uh, that's why the, that game is last because it changes playoff scenarios drastically by itself. And so that's why we also want that last by a huge, huge margin. Uh, so you kind of bank it on that. Uh, on the other side, uh, Energy and Rogue is only at 0.3 really doesn't change a whole lot uh pretty boring series all in all because obviously like energy's clinched number one rogue hasn't clinched bottom two yet obviously so they can still do something here but it doesn't um affect as many teams 
But again, the reason why that game is not first is because you can't have Cloud9 G2 be um, be back-to-back -back games. So Cloud9 G2 are number one and two. Then we have Energy Rogue as our, f like, f like our filler game. It's when you go and get a snack, you know, and then you come back, and then we got some doozies. Cloud9 G2, and I think that game, like, everyone's banking on or hoping that it's like, all right, they're playing for at least, like, uh, either a playoff spot or these teams are battling for a top four spot, which is very possible. Um, and then we go into, you know, our better team, Space Station Knights Ghost, which is funny to say. <laughs> so that's why that order is that way. Uh, Rogue Cloud 9 is probably the least interesting compared to Space Station G2. We, we could have flipped these, but then again, Energy Rogue is here, and that's why that's that way, actually. So you, we really couldn't flip these. Um, it, it's not always that the first game is the least important. Uh, because also it's kind of fun to hype into the first match to get people to watch early on. Uh, so that's how this schedule went. Not much could change here. Probably the only thing I would change or uh, could change is probably these two games. You could put Cloud9 G2 in the fifth spot, but I think it's better to give some love to Space Station and Pittsburgh Knights for a top two potential spot and put that as late as possible. Uh, except for Ghost and Birds. Um... Uh, we'll answer questions uh, towards the end of this, like why we're doing the week five schedule. So once I'm done here, I'll open the floor to questions. So sorry in chat. I haven't really been seeing some of them. So that's why the schedule is this way here. Move over to Europe. So Europe, I did this one as well. Uh, there's one game I would switch if I could, and I'm not sure if we will be able to, uh, but we'll see. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, some big things here about talking about how teams can't play back-to-back -back games is Dig, Vitality, and TSM all play one another this week. Uh, so right there, you already know that those three games have to be one, three, and five. They could be two, four, and six, but we got Mouse Sports versus Reciprocity, and that game is pretty big and probably will guarantee a top two spot for someone. Uh, the, the, uh, the reason why that that one is last uh, this one compared to Veloce is because if Reciprocity sweeps, no matter what, um, if they sweep Mouse Sports, they clinch a top two spot. So they control their own destiny there. Um, Veloce doesn't have a great game differential. So it could come down to like if it was Mouse versus Veloce here, that Veloce couldn't even get a top two spot at that point, And it would make that match a little bit less interesting. Uh, so that's why th uh, this one's here because very likely Reciprocity is playing for a top two spot. Um, well, they have to be actually, because if they sweep, they get it. Uh, let's see what else we have to see here. So that's why that game is last pretty important game there. TSM dig is first because the, these are the two teams that are more likely to not make playoffs than Barcelona. Um, so you, you kind of want to put the pressure on them on TSM and dig to see who could win there. And it's a little bit more hype one. It's a great first game. Like, I think it's, like, fantastic. Two, you don't want Barcelona too early, uh, where, because if Barcelona loses, then that TSM dig game is a little bit less interesting because, like, TSM's clinched. Dig hasn't, and, like, dig still has things to play for. But um, it's just, like, it's just not as exciting. So you want that game first. The reason why Barcelona complexity is not later is because it's Barcelona complexity. Complexity is not playing for anything. So the game by itself is not that interesting. It just has a lot of impact on who makes top six. So we keep that one a little bit lower uh, on the totem pole here. So again, if Barcelona wins that, it makes things a little bit more uh, interesting. If they lose, then like TSM clinches without having to do anything. But Dig still has to clinch later on unless Dig won against TSM. So we might know our top six after our first two games. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. The only thing I would switch uh, after uh, getting some rest and looking back over it is TSM Vitality and Dig Vitality. I would actually swap these because there is a way where Dig Vitality in that uh, like fifth game, Dig is already out of playoffs. If Dig loses to TSM and Barcelona beats Complexity, then Dig is out. Uh, so we'll show that here. I think it's not every s score, uh, but let's see. Um, yeah, so, like, say Dig loses 3-1, I think. Or 3-0, maybe? Let's see. Well, I don't think it matters for Barcelona too much. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it doesn't matter here, but say, like, TSM, uh, say Vitality wins this game. That's where it is. Which I think is a very likely outcome. Like, TSM over Dig, Barcelona over Complexity, TSM loses to Vitality. If that happens, then Dig is out before they play Vitality. Vitality is still playing for a top-two spot. 
So that's why they're kind of later in the day as well. Um, or a more likely top two spot because their game differential is so good, uh, which we'll go back and I'll show you that real quick. Uh, but I would just change TSM and Dig here in, in these two games just because TSM, no matter what, will still be alive going into that game, even if they get 3 0 here and say Barcelona 3 0 is there and say Vitality 3 2 is here. I believe TSM, yeah, no matter what, they're still alive, even if this is the other way. So, I would rather have that game in the fifth spot, but we'll see if we can change that. I'm not sure if that's possible because we already announced the uh, schedule. Who knows? Uh, but going back into our game differential uh, real quick, like Vitality is a fantastic shot at top two because they have a really good game differential. And you look at it, it's like, oh, it's only three. It's tied with Wreck. Well, it's really not because if you're going to talk about tiebreakers, teams have to tie first, right? So Vitality, the only way to tie Wreck is they have to get one more win, which means that their game differential, on average, will be greater than Wreck. It doesn't mean that will stay that way. It just means that they have a a better game differential. Uh, uh, same thing with Barcelona. Like their uh, game differential is godlike. They're two and four with, uh, with a plus one game differential. So it's insane. Like no one's passing them. Uh, going um, if anyone ties them down there for that two and five spot, then people are in trouble. Which is like dig. But if they get three wins, if Vitality ties them, if TSM ties them, neither of those teams can win the game differential. Because again, Barcelona would move up to minimum plus two. Vitality would fall to a minimum plus one. Uh, so there you go. Uh, but that's why our schedule is this way, uh, in case anyone had any questions there. The TSM did game, uh, once again, to put pressure on those two teams to play at their best. Followed by the Barcelona game because it's not that appealing, but we still need it for playoff scenarios. Uh, followed by Vitality games coming in for a top two spot. And then obviously Mouse Sports, Veloce, and Rec. They're all fighting for top two spots as well. So they're at the bottom because those are more important generally, unless we know that teams are playing like win and in for top six, which is not the case really, except for Barcelona. Like if they win, they are in, but they could also clinch if Dig went 0 2. So you also don't want Barcelona to be ahead of both Dignitas games. Uh, so that's why we have our schedule this way. Uh, we talked about playoff scenarios in previous videos, if you want to go check them out for all those uh, things. But if you guys have any questions real quick, we'll take some. In case anyone has any questions on the schedule or whatever. <clears throat> uh, the uh, other thing is we try not to... Um, it doesn't really matter about like warm up games versus like someone playing later because honestly these teams are professional and they should be able to show up on the day. Uh, like I think I looked up stats previously where warm up games really didn't have any advantage over uh, the other games, and I think that's kind of skewed because usually that means it's like the bad teams always play like game one and game three, while the good teams are playing game three and game six because you know. You want to hype up those games. So I think it's skewed a little bit that usually um, the warm-up teams are probably the worst team than the uh, other team. But I think uh, overall, uh, these guys are professionals and they can win when they need to win. Uh, that, that happened to Rogue actually last season where uh, I think Space Station came in with a warm-up game over Splice. And then Rogue, they still beat them to make playoffs. And we all know what happened after that. So... <clears throat> do, do I believe in Veloce Top 2? No. Uh, just because they have to beat Mouse and get help. I don't think they're beating Mouse. Um, th they could beat Mouse, obviously, but their game differential is really, really poor. So they don't want any tiebreakers. So I don't think they'll get top two, but they're still looking pretty good. Still looking pretty good. We'll see if they can make their run through playoffs. What website is this? Uh, I'll post it in the description below. It's the Nalan playoff scenarios sheet. Uh, let's see what else uh, looking really bad for dig having to play against tsm has been growing and vitality who look better as well yeah but i do think like i mean look like it's uh, looking bad because of what dig's been playing like too right like dig versus tsm still shouldn't be that big a deal like i think uh veloce probably being that series a little bit more than tsm won it like tsm obviously had offense but uh, veloce was playing terrible so i wouldn't like say like tsm's in a fantastic spot yet but we'll see <clears throat> let's see what does uh c9 have to do to make worlds i mean like all they have to do is make playoffs and playoffs is not that hard for them if we go back here real quick 
like I'm not going to go over every playoff scenario, but we talked about game differentials a little bit on Europe side. I'll do it over here as, as well. Uh, Pittsburgh Knights have a decent game differential. It's about the same as Space Station if they were to tie. Um, Space Station is a little bit lower. Uh, Ghost Gaming doesn't have a great one. Uh, I'm sorry. They're close to uh, Ghost Gaming. I'm sorry. Uh, Ghost Gaming and uh, Pittsburgh Knights are very similar in game differential because, again, like, say, an average series is 3-1. If they tied, they would be exactly the same. Space Station is the one with the kind of bad game differential right now, but obviously they can make up more ground. But Cloud9 down here, 1-4, and four, minus 4 game differential. They're looking fantastic for tiebreakers because, once again, the teams ahead of them at 2-4 and four and 2-3, and three, they obviously have that second win already, so that's, you know, plus game differential for them that already happened. But they're tied at, at minus 4 right now, so very, very likely that Cloud9, um, if they get into tiebreakers, they win game differential. So they're not looking too bad. All they really have to do is beat G2, and they're playing Rogue too. So, like, uh, say they beat Rogue and Birds lose, then Cloud9's it. If they beat G2, then they're likely into if G2 loses as well. So they don't have to worry too much. Like, obviously, they still have to win, but it's not that bad. <clears throat> Where do I think TSM will end up? Uh, we'll talk about predictions tomorrow, but I think TSM's... Like, uh, this one's a coin toss. Uh, TSM dig, and then TSM vitality. But I do think vitality will probably finish top two. Um, so they'll fall probably in the fifth, sixth range, if not out of playoffs. Just depends on what happens here. <clears throat> uh, da, da, da. Is there any way you could change the TSM versus Vitality and Dig? Which just, would be boring if Dig is already out. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I, uh, I threw over a message, and we'll see what happens if those change. But who knows? It's not the end of the world, obviously. But um, we'll see if that happens. It might be a little bit too late, but that's okay. That's what happens after working two show days and doing playoff scenarios and doing schedules all of in a weekend. I'm bound to make a couple mistakes here or there. <clears throat> Who do you think is the better matchup this week, NA or EU? Uh, probably Mouse Sports Rec is the better matchup than Space Station Knights, but Space Station Knights is getting pretty good too. I know you're doing predictions later, but what do you think about Vital choking again seven? It's possible, obviously. You know, they could lose, but I don't think it'll happen. Uh, let's see. Alan Cody, where, 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 where? Oh, he, he meant as regions? Who do you... Sir Zach? No, it says, who do you think has, has the better matchup this week? NA or EU? Like, who is... Like, what's the best match of the week? That's what it sounds like to me, anyway. Uh, who do you think's looking better right now? Uh, you, you, uh, Europe or NA? I would say NA. I think Europe's been a little bit shaky. Uh, Vitality looked pretty on form this past week, and obviously, if that continues, we'll see. But, like, I think overall, if I was, like, power ranking everyone, there'd be a lot more NA teams higher than Europe right now. But I think Europe's been getting better over these past few weeks. Uh, but it's still been kind of sluggish, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but I think NA, it's weird because I think people will be like, well, the big three sucks, so maybe NA sucks, but I don't know. The Space Station's playing well, uh, but obviously that was one week. It's very similar to like the Vitality situation, but obviously Vitality has the history. Ghost has looked pretty good. I'm pretty happy with what Ghost has been doing. Um, Knights are obviously, like if I had a power rank right now, I'd put Energy 1, Knights 2 across Europe as well. Uh, Vitality would probably be third. Um, but yeah, that's probably how I would have it. All right, that's going to do it. So that's how we got to our week five schedules. Go check out RLCS on Saturday and Sunday. We'll play with scenarios on Wednesday and Friday for the YouTube side of things as well. Uh, but yeah, this is how we got there. Hope you guys like the new schedule. Try and do it as best as we possibly can. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's hard. Like this time. Playoff scenarios are a lot more, a lot of teams in the mix. Like last season, NA, it was like, all right, there's three teams battling for top two. And then like one team was already out. And we only had like four teams battling for top six uh, with one like already clinched. It wasn't even that big a deal. Nowadays, it's like, oh God, everyone's alive for everything. Even Space Station could fall out of playoffs. Like it's nuts. Uh, but yeah, 
So that's what we're seeing. And I'll be there on the desk. And we will go over playoff scenarios in the pre-show. We will also uh, go over playoff scenarios every single time before every single match for those teams involved. I will try and do it as best as I possibly can. Uh, and as short as I can. Because playoff scenarios, like, the graphics of the pre-show are not going to include every single scenario. Because there's somewhere, like, if a team even loses both or something, then they can still make it in. But I just, you know, uh, for the most part, I'm going to exclude those. Um and we'll just talk about the main big hitters. And then obviously, like if those are about to happen, I'll let you know about those as we go on throughout the day. Uh, but yeah, but that's it. We'll catch you guys on Saturday and Sunday. Goodbye.